Now, let's go to the third one. Keeping the Sabbath pleases God. Everyone say with me. Keeping the Sabbath pleases God. So friends, when it comes to Sunday, if you want to please God very specifically, on the day of also you have to please God, but very specifically, what do you do? I decide, I want to please God. I want to celebrate the Sabbath, worshiping God, praising Him, not in some hotel, not in some other place, not, to, not doing other things. I want to be in the house of the Lord on Sabbath. Hallelujah. Friends, now I wanted to quickly ask you a question. Did Jesus go to the synagogue? What do you think? Let's read now. Please can you put this verse up for me? I'll read it also from here. Luke 4.16. Let's read together. Where was Jesus on the Sabbath? That is an important question. And I think church needs to know this. You need to know the answers. Where was Jesus on the Sabbath? Luke 4.16. Come, read with me. Read, I'm church, read now. He went to Nazareth, where he had drink water, and I can't hear church read. And on the seventh day, he went into the synagogue. Read the next part. As was his custom. Let that verse be there, Julia, for one more. On the seventh, where did Jesus go? Ah, what is the synagogue? Today, if you today's context, more like a church, a place of worship. Because the Jews lost their place of worship because of their disobedience, God punished them and sent them to Babylonia. In Babylonia, they didn't have a temple. And that is where, you know, body of sickness of, by the rivers of Babylon, where we sat and we went, what happened? The children of the God were punished and sent to a strange land. In that land, they didn't have a temple. So instead of the temple, the word synagogue was formed. That's why when you read in your Bible, you will see the word synagogue. If Jesus went every Sabbath to the synagogue, you and I have no excuse to say, I can't be here. I'm going to uh, tell you a few other things here. If you make time for God, God makes time for you. If you honor God, God honors you. This is not my word, this is the word of the Lord. God honors His people. The Bible says, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. The church is a lifeboat and not a shoreboat. Write that down. It is important. The church is a lifeboat and not a shoreboat. 2,223 people sailed in an amazing ship long years ago. In a ship where people said, God cannot even see that ship. And you and I know the name of the ship. What was that ship? The Titanic. And on the Titanic, 2,000 plus people sailed. Friends, when it crashed into the iceberg and the lives were lost, Questions started to be asked, you know, after disaster there are questions, always. Am I right? Always. You see, when a plane crash, the next thing is always the start to ask questions. Why did this happen? And one of the most startling facts were, on the Titanic, can you guess how many lifeboats were there? Come on, take a guess if you can. Twenty lifeboats for two thousand two hundred and twenty-three people. And then the manager was asked, why did you have so little lifeboats? You know what was the answer? If we had too many lifeboats, it would not look nice. Today people are more concerned about looking nice rather than being nice. Today people want comfort rather than being a comforter. The church is not a showboat, it is a lifeboat. Hallelujah! Get on to it! And there is salvation there. Praise God! Amen! I will stay. So there is a difference between interested in your church and committed. A hen and a pig were having a conversation. They said, what shall we have for breakfast? The hen said, let's have eggs and ham. The pig said, oh no! Oh no! The hen said, why? I will provide the eggs. You provide the ham. The pig said, yes. For you, it is involvement. For me, it is total commitment. 
friends, there's a difference between being involved and being content. Here are a few things I would like to give to you. Which are you? Maybe you might like to write these things down. Are you a pillar or a sleeper? Are you a wing or a weight? Are you a power or a problem? Are you a promoter or a provoker? Are you a giver or a getter? Are you a supporter or a sponge? Are you a soldier or a slacker? Are you a worker or a warrior? Are you a friend or a fault finder? Are you a helper or a hinder? Friends, today you decide what you are going to be in the church. Now friends, they have spoken extensively. They have spoken about the church. They have spoken of various things of the Sabbath. Sabbath day is to be kept holy. Yes, sometimes you have to work. Listen, but you separate your time. Do not sacrifice this for anything. It is vital. It is important. I like to tell this story. When you come to church, think like this. I want to be a supporter. I want to receive something, but I want to also give something. Church is not a show board, it is a life board. I want to read the story. It's a beautiful story. And I'm asking some of you to be a challenge when you hear this story. Some teenage girls who love the Lord founded a club named Do Without Club in order to raise money for missions. They determined to add to their funds by sacrificial giving. The majority who were well to do or well to do homes easily found ways to contribute. But one poor little girl named Margie, it was extremely difficult. One day she knelt by her bed and asked the Lord to show her something she could do without. As she prayed, her pet spaniel licked her hands. Suddenly she remembered that the family doctor had offered to buy him. So tears came down her face as she explained, Oh bride, I can't think of parting with you. Then she thought of the words, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I'll do it, she said. Going to the doctor's home, she sold the dog for $50. Even though she missed her pet, she was still happy because she had been able to put the money into the mission fund. The doctor was pleased with the dog, but he wondered if a pressing need had caused the girl to part with him. So he stopped by her house. When he heard her story, he went home deep in thought. In his life of abundance, he had never denied himself anything. The next morning, Margie found the dog scratching at the door. This note was fastened to his collar. Your practical Christianity has done more for me than any sermon I have ever heard. Last night, I offered what is left of my wretched life to God. I like to join your club and began by doing without this. Hallelujah. Amen. You can do something for me. It's always something you can do. Praise God. Close your eyes for the church. God, you have made this Sabbath the whole. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to know you. By keeping your Sabbath, Lord, we respect your commands. We respect us. If any of our brothers and sisters are here who are troubled and worried and pressurized with life situation, I pray, let them find rest. As they come to the church, as they hear your word, let them go different to what they came. Let them feel your presence upon their life. Most gracious Father, to this extent we just thank you that you have called us to live a life of excellence. Father, we are sorry 
for the times when we have sacrificed your son. When we have been involved in other things rather than giving you the first place. We thank you that you are a God who forgives us. I thank you for my dear late church. Lord, I pray that those who are not here as well will hear this sermon. In the days to come, and everyone will get a feel that the importance of being in the house of God, the importance of worshipping you, the importance of keeping the Sabbath holy and giving you the first place. Lord, I pray over our congregation. Bless everyone. I pray for committed members, not only interested members, committed people who want to see this ministry go to the next level. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.